Uh, well, but anyway, why don't uh, you take the floor and let us know what's going on? So oh, yeah, from my side, I, I just uh, updated documentation we, from uh, which I experienced uh, regarding NBD boot, uh, remote boot, uh, and nothing, nothing more. So it's very, it's super, super fast. Um, so I'm eager to hear from you uh, what's the uh, next step if I can help you in some in any way. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, not being an expert in, in the NBD or NFS, then then what I'll do is uh, go try it and uh, see if I can get Paul to go ahead and implement it as a, as a way for us to deal with the file system use for the, um, for the reference design. I think it's a big win. So I'll do that today because uh, I don't have any meetings or anything to do at work until 6 p.m. my time. So this is... <laughs> Good news, because I don't get a lot of uninterrupted time. Because as as you all know, uh, interruptions are very costly. So uh, I'm looking forward to digging into that, and also helping uh, test out the the wonderful stuff that Andre has taught me about uh, how to how to get around the limitations with the port types. Um, so but back when I was doing FPGA and ASIC work, then this was it was all very conservative and. Um, the, the, the level of, uh, of writing for the VHDL that we have here is a little bit different than, so I'm relearning everything that I used to know and learning <laughs> lots of new things and it's fantastic. I'm having a blast. This is the best job ever. Um, but I, I'm today, I didn't get a chance yesterday to try to put the tuckle script that fixes the port definitions because Andre has these nice types that are very readable, uh, like the constellation and 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 the, the sh whether it's short or long, um, and then so I'm not used to that actually being given to a port. Uh, and when I saw that, I was like, oh, we're gonna have to rewrite it. No. So there's a script that I think takes care of it, and I've I've gone through the Xilinx uh, forums and learned that like this is a thing. Um, and I think that that particular script that sets this up, which I missed because it was in the build directory and not in the RTL directory, I think that all I have to do is call that in the tackle script that is used by the um, reference design build. So that's what I'm going to try to do today. And then that should work. I looked, I read it, and I'm like, well, this just sets everything up. This is really very cool. Um, so that that's what I'm going to try to do. Today. I tried to get around to it yesterday, and it and never got it back to the lab. So. Anyway, back. Uh, so, Stefano, back to you for anything else you want to say, uh, and then Andre has the floor to correct me and to continue to uh, to help help uh, get things working. Um, yeah. So, uh, I yeah, the script was so it worked in my small tests, but then if I run the script in in an existing project, it will sort of try to change stuff from other files and, you know, all messes up and that's not great. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I have, <laughs> I have, I have a fix. I just didn't um, submit yet. It, it It's ready. Um, I can submit in like, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. It'll yeah. take me longer to get back over to the lab. So I still got to wrap oh. stuff up here for the day. So yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead and check it in and then uh, I'll go to the build directory and try to see if I can um, use what you've got to, to set it up to where the, um, the overall build with the big reference design that it mm -hmm. all builds and, and everything. So I think we're really close. Yeah. So I, while I was developing, I remember running through Vivado and it worked and all, uh, but for the block design, when you're going to add, when, when, um, when we want to add a module, I think it, that's what they call to the block design, the ports have to be like standard logic and standard logic factor. Um, that's why I put like, there's a wrapper that basically does this conversion. There is a, a mapping to, for the metadata stuff. Yeah. Like, I think zero is short frame a QPSK yeah. and one fourth or something like that. Right. Yeah, it, yeah. it made sense. It, it looks, it looks fantastic. I just, I just missed the wrapper. I didn't, I did not see it when I, uh, so I copied over everything that was in the RTL directory thinking, oh, well, I'll just need the RTL. And that was uh, kind of dumb. So I will fix it. Yeah. It, no, it, I mean, <laughs> it's not written <laughs> anywhere. It's not like, right. <laughs> Yeah, so, I'm very, I'm just very excited because, like, uh, you know, the, 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 I'm, I'm now really 
um, appreciating the like the 9371 and the Jes D 204B is great. It solves mm -hmm. a lot of problems, but like you have to know how to bolt it up. And I, I think that yeah. when we finally get the, all the integration pain uh, sorted out, that we'll get some some fantastic results. Um, so much better than than the stuff I had to deal with and and the most recent like for the 9361 then you have to do a lot more backflips you know and it's uh mm -hmm. it's a sort of a completely different interface so this is this is pretty cool so I think it'll work uh I'm sorry it, ta it takes me so long to to figure this stuff out I'm, I'm I am honestly trying to learn it as fast as I can and I'll do the best I can so I and now I uh, so I see the the work that you've done and the and the wrappers and everything um and we'll We'll get it working. Yeah, yeah. And um, like if we need to, s like I, I wrote the wrapper for the c the setup I had. It doesn't um, mean, you know, it's the only wrapper. Like we can make, I don't know, sim I don't know simplifications or tweaks. It's like yeah. the wrapper would be the uh, adaptation layer to the actual platform you're running and stuff like that. Yeah, no, that's a really, that's a good point. Because it might be, um that we need one of these per yeah. uh ip you know so for yeah. uh, for the other things that we want to integrate in or if there's a way to kind of put it at the top level for the in the top level make for the project then that might be the right spot i don't know yet um you know but this yeah. is a standard problem this is you know it's yeah. mentioned on the forums and and you, your solution is great so it'll just be, where where it ends up staying is uh is kind of arbitrary we'll we'll pick the best one yeah and, yeah and then we'll be able to write it down. And then what I'll do is is explain why you need to do this. And like, maybe we can have a mm -hmm. template or something that, OK, so here's your RTL. OK, so if you add this, then it'll it'll work in. So we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, that's really, the, that's all that's all I've got going on um, here anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. We're we're right. We are working hard to um, to get in touch with uh, lots of different groups at IEEE that will uh, be very interested in this work, and I've spent a lot of time on the phone uh, for like organizational and administrative stuff for taxes. Um, but today I get to to spend in the lab, and it should have a report uh, at the end of my day. Cool, cool. Yeah, let me know. Sometimes I I figure I take a bit longer than it, I wanted <laughs> yeah. to get back. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> Everything always takes longer than you think. <laughs> yeah. That's just the way it works. Yeah. So I, I, I did, uh, I don't remember. So let me just see his name. Um, oh, F, F five O E O. I don't. I, oh, Everest. Yes, yes. Like he was trying to um, get Pluto up and running. Yes. Um, I did build Pluto um, and, you know, I had a, a quick look and I think I've, uh, there is a, a, a data path that essentially is access stream and it, it comes from a DMA. So I, I, I pointed, um, uh, I didn't fully complete like locally the, the thing. Um, I pointed him um, how he could do. Um, I might, yeah, I might actually get something like more um, how do you say ready for him because I, th I think his specialty is not um, FPG so I can probably take this on and just you know it's gonna take I don't know half an hour oh wow yeah that'd be great it would be super helpful yeah. for him so that he can uh, add you know add what he's really good at to the to the mix yeah yeah it'd be fantastic if you could do that I'd look forward to that um and the rest of the time I'm just doing the, the presentation stuff um I'm almost I think so it's 25 minutes. I don't think I'm going to have time to cover all of the blocks. Uh, so I'm doing up to the LDPC encoder stuff. Uh, I need, so I have the slides. I have sort of a script or you know, something that resembles the script. Um, I need to actually like start recording and, you know, timing and to, because I, it might be that I think it's going to, what I have is going to take. 10 minutes, I don't know, 10 minutes, but it actually takes 45 minutes and therefore I have to cut a lot. So I, I yeah, I need to get this. Yeah, and another thing that is open to you to do is if you um, if you end up with a 45 minute talk, like if you like if you record it and you do like mm -hmm. 
the way it should be done, then we can put that on our YouTube. And then you can cut down something for Ham Expo. That's totally mm -hmm. okay. So so it, it's both and and not either or. So if you end up with a bunch of okay. footage, then we can edit that up and, and present it so that so that the um, the message that you have or the the flow that you have can be presented as well. Uh, so don't throw anything away. Um, yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I, I'm actually, so I got uh, like the slides up to a point and I figured it's probably enough for the 25 minutes. So I'm gonna re uh, go for the recording stuff. And if, yeah, like you said, um, I think it's better to go um, as in deeper, instead of going superficially over everything is better to go, okay, no, let me go through. <laughs> yeah, uh, I agree. Like many, pick, yeah, yeah, pick something and really do a deeper dive on it. I think that yeah. would be great. That, yeah, I agree. Yeah, so I think it's, I have, wait, today, um, I have three and a half weeks or something. Yeah, plenty of time. <laughs> <sighs> yeah <laughs> that's what that's our joke around here anyway it's like oh look i, I have a four hours to put together a thing oh plenty of time you know yeah three weeks should, yeah. should be okay though it's a, it's time enough not time to panic yet uh, let me yeah let us know let all of us know if we can help in any way like if you need a diagram mm -hmm. or something like that you know if there's anything that you need then we'll pitch in and help yeah i can probably uh, like the presentation i'm doing in a i I don't have the link. It's like a, it's not PowerPoint. It's a, I don't know how to call it. It's a different thing. Um, and you can put like some, um, I think it's more, um, it's less boring, but the, the key thing that, um, is it be, like, I'm not in a paid account. So it's, a, it's, it's open, like I can share the link. Oh, cool. Um, okay. Like uh, a cloud-based presentation doodad? Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay, yeah, that that's a uh, can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. So, yeah, I can probably share and uh, if people want to see, like, I mean, there's lots of rough edges, right? Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, I can probably share and yeah, if I don't know if if people are interested interested. Well, I'm biased, of course they are. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, so the uh, organizer said like one of the requirements was like this. Uh, like you can submit something that is on somewhere else. Like if you have a, I don't yeah, know. yeah, they 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 say that because they the, um, Eric Guth and the rest of the Ham Expo team they want original work. They want things that yeah. that's original. So they don't want you to give the same talk that you've given at Hamcation, Hamvention, at da Tapper DCC, you know. But like mm -hmm. in the past, uh, when when a talk has 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 applied. Um, that has been shown mm -hmm. maybe one time in the past, then they're like, no, 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 that's not what we're trying to prevent. We just want, we don't want the same talk that the person has given for years, like okay, the okay. regular thing, like that we're trying to get new material, but it doesn't mean that it, it has to be, you know, uh, relentlessly unique um, because that's a lot to ask. So, so don't worry about the, the material, some of the material being, or, or, what they're also very enthusiastic about is that if you've given a talk in the past and you have one that builds upon that work and shows yeah. continuation and, and progress, they're very excited about that sort of stuff too. So, so don't worry too much about that. You're not in that category that they're trying to um, okay. head off. You know, they're just they're trying to get rid of the the same old talk that shows up at every single convention in the ham radio space. They'd like we we'll really want to see uh, fresh material. Uh, to see that there's development and progress yeah. so, yeah, so so don't don't worry don't worry too i much. thought you know i don't know what if i sh like shared the slides and suddenly i don't know oh my god you, you, you no know, you no that's <laughs> no don't worry that's not a, okay. a disc that's not a disqualifying thing at all okay. and you're obviously sharing because you want feedback and you want the the eventual talk that shows up at Ham Expo to be of high quality. So there's there should be no objection, and there will be no objection to that. That's not a disqualifying condition in any way. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna put it on Slack then. So cool. Yeah, look forward to it. Talk. Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's it. That that is it really. Cool. Okay. All right. Any 
Anybody else have any last comments or requests uh, before we close down? Uh, yes. Uh, so from uh, from my side, um, I heard uh, one video onto onto YouTube uh, regarding the difficulties about NFS. So that's why I starting working onto NBD. So I decided by myself. Uh, now it's it's like a, um, like to jump onto a horse that is already run. So, uh, I, uh, so for example, um, I heard that there are uh, some register problem. Uh, uh, in the past, uh, I uh, I used it to create uh, some kind of uh, automatic tool to just describe the register in a, in a interface definition language, and then just uh, start the script and generate the VHDL from one side and the software code, the C code from the other side, because then needs to be in sync. Uh, this is maybe uh, a thing that uh, come in mind that maybe uh, I don't know if can help. Another thing I don't know for the DMA if the, the sign is, uh, is finished and uh, if some software is needed uh, to test. And the third point, um, so uh, maybe it's in, in some document but I, I didn't uh, dig uh, too much. So. Uh, so at the end, the data, the payload, will come from the, the board itself, right? Um, so I don't know, from the audio channel or whatever, some kind of packets then we, we throw in. And so this will, so this will affect obviously the, the PS part of the, of the, of the, of the thing. And uh, um, so, uh, so is the DMA, I don't know, uh, variant such like, I don't know, scatter gather. Uh, or um, use uh, some accelerator on into into the PL to uh, to yeah to accelerate. Yeah, the... yeah, I got it. Yeah, the so yeah the the um, automatic it's... generation. Uh, so yeah, there, your three questions are like, what do we do? Where's our status with like the the automatic VHDL uh, generation? Um, like for instance, HLS or the or the MATLAB. HDL coder or things like that. It sounds like that's the that's the area, um, and that's that's an area I know a little bit about. And I'm trying to get uh, the correct tool toolbox from MATLAB, and I got some some I have some reports on that, but it's still in the process of trying to negotiate. What we use or or what I've used for for MATLAB is the um, the at home license, which is non commercial. And also non-academic because we're not a university; we're just a nonprofit, uh, and but we're not commercial either. So we get a huge discount on MATLAB, and we get a huge discount on MATLAB and Simulink and a lot of the toolboxes. However, not all of them. And unfortunately, one of the ones that we're not allowed to buy is HDL Coder. It turns out. So I wrote to MATLAB, and I've had several phone calls with them, and we are not yet at a point where they're able to. Uh, or whether they're willing to sell us a very discounted HDL coder toolbox because they're worried um, that it's too hard for us to understand uh, VHDL. And they, 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 uh, the, from, their, from their point of view, they already have to give us such a huge amount of customer and technical support to their commercial companies, uh, their commercial customers that use HDL and GPU, they have a GPU coder, an HDL coder, and a MATLAB coder, which does uh, general purpose processing. So they have all the heterogeneous processing stuff. So to go from MATLAB directly to all the way to either GPU or HDL or uh, ARM code. Um, so we're still talking. So I've, I've tried to stick up for us and say, you know, we did not, we don't use any of your technical support at all. Uh, that's not available to a home customer non-academic and non-commercial customers don't get any technical support anyway. What if I promised that we would never ask you for help and we would just deal? Uh, would you still be willing to uh, sell us the, the, the toolboxes? So in terms of like the MATLAB tool flow, which is also what analog devices with this ADRV 9371, that's one of, that's one of the primary tool flows that they want us to use. They want us to use a workflow that incorporates MATLAB. In order to do that, you have to have these toolboxes, and so that's what I've been working on with MATLAB. Now, if we wanted to buy them, uh, if we wanted to say, okay, we'll pay the commercial rate, then it's like thirteen thousand a year. That's a lot of money. So <laughs> I'm just like, 
okay, that's an awful lot of money. The MATLAB is expensive. The, the license that we have is like 1% of that. It's like a, a 150 a year, as opposed to five, six, 7,000 a year. Um, so that's where we're at on being able to generate FPGA code from like either Octave scripts, like you can work with a free and open source tool chain Octave, and then you can say, okay, fine. At the very end, when you're happy with that, you can put it in MATLAB and MATLAB it then goes into HDL coder and then it goes into the 9371 and then it ends up as a bitstream. So this sounds great. It opens up so much power to use these really big chips. Um, I, I, I'm hoping that that is the same sort of, that that's answering some of the question here and that you know, cause it, we also have an option to use HLS inside of Vivado, and we do have a full license from Vivado that allows access to DSP high level system or whatever it's called. So HLS allows you to go from C code into uh, FPGA code. So we already have that in the license. When you check out the license, you can play with that and see if it helps you. So far though, it seems like the best success that we've had is just simply writing the VHDL in the Verilog. And that's totally fine until you go to put it act onto actual hardware, which is what we're struggling with now to make sure that we can hook the goes into to the goes out is to get them bolted up and to get all the errors sorted out. And so your second question was about payload. Where's the payload come from? And we have talked about this a couple of times and we've backed off from being really ambitious. So yes, that's as far as I can tell that does come from the processor side and it would be something like uh, come in through ethernet, some sort of you know, rand or just random uh, payload data. Um, so I'm not too concerned about where the payload comes from, but I'm assuming it comes from the processor side. Uh, originally, we were going to set up programmable logic. So on the PL side to do GSE right out of the box, but um, people like Ron Economos recommended that maybe we should do it a little more simply. And, and he's right. Um, so I think we, I know we had a discussion on Slack, but it's probably way up in the history and I've, I've got it down here as an action item to revisit that and make sure that it's understandable. Uh, and then DMA is a really good question. That was your third thing. The direct memory access, that's the only way that you get data in and out of the 9371. So it's, it's designed for direct memory access through uh, JSD 204B. And that's it. That's how you get stuff in and out. Uh, and as soon, and we have been able to ship data using both the C. Uh, there's a there's an API from analog devices, and we've been able to get it to work um, using both the C code uh, methods and, and interface, and also Python. And so far, Python seems to be easier to use, but we're we're a little concerned about the performance. Like, is it going to be slower? Um, now, figuring out how to how to get all this to work together is is what we're working hard on now. So, in terms of like DMA, it's like it seems to be sitting right there. You look at the diagram and you look at the HDL and the reference diagram, and everything's directly hooked up to to DMA. And when you write a little Python script that makes a sine wave, or you know, it's I's and Q's. It's I like an I and Q file, and you say to repeat, and it's like there there it is on the screen. There it is go, coming out over the air. So. It's, it's one of those situations where it's like having a Ferrari. It's really fast, the fastest car on the road, but you know, someone drops off the Ferrari in your driveway and there's no key. And you're like, well, where's the key? Well, they don't have keys these days. So you have to figure out how to drive your Ferrari. <laughs> and so that's kind of like, okay, woohoo. I don't have this problem, uh, Michelle, right now. I have, uh, yeah. <laughs> Very small cars, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah. I, so it's it's like somebody handing you the keys to a car, or like <laughs> handing giving you a car without any keys. And it's like, so yeah. we're 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 sorting it out. We we've, we've been able to operate the the hardware successfully with the API, and now it's like okay. Now it seems like you just set it up in the pro processor side to write to this this memory that you've allocated. And it just shows up on JSD and out the door it goes. And wow, is it fast? It's really kind of neat. So I think we'll be very happy when we get figure out where the steering wheel is. And you know, wow, it's you know, uh, you know, stick shift. Okay, got it. You know, so so we're really close. Um, 
I hope that's sort of an answer. Uh, Perfectly. Okay, thank you. Just, yeah. Just, can you, yeah. Can you I just, this is the sort of thing where I'm like, oh, I feel so stupid. I've, I, you know, the, sometimes the hardware makes me feel dumb. Like, yeah. where, where, where's the, where's the, where's the steering wheel? And it's like, oh, okay. It's, it's, it's trying, it's, it really is a, a very nice uh, system yeah. on chip. So yeah. we're I'm close. really, I'm really dumb. Can you, can you, uh, can you please just send the link uh, where this uh, uh, C code and Python stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I will. And Absolutely. First, thank you. Thanks a lot for, for the first step. Uh, I think your job is very, is uh, something extraordinary because you are in the middle uh, uh, between university and uh, uh, an enterprise. And you are kind of taking really the best from both. And it's really, I, I keep everything open. And I totally um, share your, your vision. So you are opening a new road uh, at the end. Uh, for the first point, for example, uh, j just to say, um, I see another possibility, but uh, I, I never uh, verified this. So uh, just to from uh, Octave to generate C code, because at the end it's C++. It's, uh, uh, and let's see if this code can be somewhat uh, entered into the uh, Xilinx uh, HLS engine. And that would be totally cut off uh, all the commercial stuff. But this is, I, I never explored this, I said, but theoretically it seems that there are also some uh, tools to convert from C to, um, to VHDL or to Verilog. Uh, and then it, it will be up to the Xilinx compiler to uh, Xilinx uh, place and route to address uh, to uh, fit the CLB, the cells in the better way, use DSP, don't use DSP. Uh, and, and this will keep this philosophy to keep everything open and everything uh, usable by everybody. Yeah, so, yeah, let me let me dig in and see what I can do. I, I've, I've used the, the Xilinx HLS in the past and I've used a similar tool with Cadence, um, but it's been a while. And let me see what I can do. And, and we have we do have a, a technical meeting coming up on the 5th of February um, where, where we're going to try to talk about a lot of different subjects. And so I think it, what I'll do is I'll try to get uh, some answers and maybe some, some prototyping done uh, before the 5th of February so that it can be kind of presented and, and talked about. It'd be really exciting to kind of not have to use um, MATLAB. I mean, I'm a big MATLAB fan, but when you look at the pricing um, and the proprietary nature, if we can possibly um, you know, learn whatever we need to learn from MATLAB, but do it to where it's open source, that would be such a huge win. It might not be equal. You know, there's some things, some advantages to to MATLAB. Uh, like as far as I can tell, there is not a there's no competitor for Simulink in in open source. Um, there's nothing really that that competes with Simulink. But MATLAB and Octave are are very compatible and very close. Um, so yeah, let me let me try to work on that and see see how far we can get. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks a lot. Oh, of course. No, thank you. That's a it's an honor to be able to work with with all of you, and uh, it, it's just a, one of the best jobs I've ever had. So we'll keep at it. Wow. All right. So we'll see. We'll do this again next week, uh, and I will um, I'll edit up our video and and put it to, put it up for people that are that are missing it. We have a couple of different people that are moving uh, on the team several actually <laughs> so <laughs> so good luck with all of your moves out there uh, those of their moving households and uh, see you on slack all right okay thank, thank you, you. See you. all right bye bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye.